Hello, welcome to this Gespi build stuff video. However, in this video we're not going to be building much other than building a collection. For people who have seen my videos before, will know that I'm a big Atari fan, especially the Atari 8-bit home computers. That resulted in an Atari 8-bit computer collection. And now I've received an Atari 8-bit home computer with which I finally can complete my collection. Let's have a look at this computer. The Atari 800 XL computer was my first computer. Before that I had the 2600, but that was for gaming only. On this Atari 800 XL I learned for example how to program, which is still my profession today. So this computer has a very big influence on my life. And now finally I can complete my collection with this model. But which model is this? Let's have a look. And this is the computer, the Atari 65XE. It still looks good. No visible damage and almost no discoloration. A little bit on yellowing on the top side, but the rest still looks perfect. And the keyboard has yellowed a bit, but not bad enough to get them right it. Even the protective film is still on the badge. I bought this for a pretty good price. And it wasn't just a computer. It came with more stuff. Like these two joysticks. Always handy to have two original Atari joysticks extra. And of course a power brick, but I'm not going to use this one. If this brick is failing, it could damage your Atari. There were also a number of games on cartridge included. Like this one, Atari Football, Eastern Front 1941, Pole Position, on the 2600, this was one of my favorites. Desert Falcon, in the XE Game System housing, Jost, a real classic, Pac-Man, Speaking of classics, and lastly, Super Breakout. A nice set together. But now let's see if it still functions. I connected it to this monitor. I use a USB phone charger as power supply. You can use any phone charger for this, as long as it supplies at least 2 ampere. You can take a normal USB cable, cut off connector on one side, and solder a 5 pin link connector to it. You turn it on and ah, he starts up. Let's test the keyboard. That also seems to work well. Now we go to the self test. Audio is working too. And all the keys are functioning. Let's try a game on this machine. I put the pole position cartridge in it. Well, that uh, looks good. The colors are uh, still looking fine. Let's race for a bit. Now that the collection is complete, it may be a good time to start looking at the, into the history of the Atari 8-bit home computers. Let's take a look at all the models that Atari released in those days. But first go back to the model that started it all. This is the Atari Video Computer System, VCS for short, and later called the Atari 2600, the name which is now most commonly used. This is where the history of the Atari 8-bit home computers begins. When Atari released the 2600 in 1977, they immediately started working on a successor. It was thought that the 2600 would last three years at most. After that, competitors would probably come up with competing copies of the 2600. That is what Atari already experienced with the home pool machine they had released before. Therefore, after three years, a successor should be ready to follow up the 2600. But things changed since those three years. Apple had great success with Apple II, 
en Commodore had released the Commodore Pad and Tandy the Tierra's 80 home computers. Games could also be played on those computers. Atari thought this could be the future of home gaming. So it decided to develop two new machines, a game computer and a home computer, both based on the same system. But during development, Atari decided to give the game computer more and more home computer features. For example, the game console got a keyboard and a connection for peripherals. In 1979, Atari introduced the Atari 400 and the Atari 800. The Atari 400 was the cheaper model, with 4 kilobytes and a membrane keyboard. And the Atari 800 was the more expensive model, with 8 kilobytes and a real keyboard. But later on, the 400 got 16 kilobytes and the 800 got 48 kilobytes. Meanwhile, the 2600 started to become an increasing success. However, the 400 and 800 did not sell that well. They were not the successor that Atari thought they would be. The biggest problem was the price. The computer was too expensive for a game computer. Meanwhile, Commodore released the Commodore 64, which was a lot cheaper than the Atari 800. Atari started developing cheaper versions of the 400 and 800. In 1983, Atari first released the successor of the 800, the Atari 1200XL. This had, just like the Commodore 64, 64 kilobytes of memory. However, Atari had not quite succeeded in making a cheaper model. The 1200XL was only slightly cheaper than the 800. And the 800 had also dropped in price in many stores, so sometimes it was even cheaper than the 1200XL. And the 1200XL also had some hardware problems. Therefore, the 400 successor was postponed for a while, so Atari could implement a number of cost-saving measures in the 400 successor. And it also decided to make a new 64 kilobyte model based on this 400 successor, which then had to replace the failing 1200 XL. That became the Atari 600 XL and 800 XL. It stopped the Atari 1200 XL, which was only on the market for half a year and was never released outside the United States. The 600 XL had 16 kilobytes and the 800 XL 64 kilobytes. The 800 XL had finally turned out to be the best-selling home computer of Atari. But then, in 1984, there was a major disaster for Atari. The game computer market completely collapsed in North America. In the meantime, Atari had already released a successor for the 2600, the Atari 5200, but that was a total flop. So Atari was still relying on the old Atari 2600. They were already working on a new successor, the Atari 7800, but by then they were already losing millions of dollars. So Warren Communications decided to sell Atari's consumer division to Jack Tramiel. Jack Tramiel was the founder of Commodore, but angrily left the company to develop a new 16-bit computer. Now he could market this new computer nicely under the Atari name. Therefore, he had stopped all developments for the game computers at Atari. Jack realized that the 16-bit computer would become too expensive for consumers in, for example, Eastern Europe. He came from Poland himself. He was an Auschwitz survivor. So he always had an eye for the less fortunate consumers. That is why he decided to also continue selling the 8-bit computers, but in a more cheaper version. Atari therefore introduced the Atari 65XE and the 130XE in 1985. Again, a cheaper and a more expensive model. The 65 XE at 64 kilobytes and the 130 XE 128 kilobytes. For the casing, he used the same style as he had already designed for his 16-bit ST computer. These XE computers were the last models of the Atari 8-bit computer line. The 65 XE was later released by Atari in Eastern Europe under the name 800 XE. But that is just a relabeled 65 XE. Now that you've seen all the models coming by, you may notice there was a 1200 XL that's missing in my collection. That's right, but because it was never sold in Europe, I don't count it for my collection. And this brings us to the end of this video. Next time we will actually build something again. But if you like this video, please click the like button. And if you click subscribe, you will stay informed about my future videos. So see you the next time. Bye.